Okay guys, today's video is going to be about something called the Cummins Killer Grid Heater Bolt Issue. Now, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, you probably think I'm crazy. I'm going to explain this to you, uh, what I know about it. I've talked to dealers, I've talked to mechanics, I've talked to a lot of people. It's almost a non-issue, but it has happened. And uh, it's happened all the way back to 5.9. Apparently, Cummins RAM doesn't feel like it's enough issue to change the, change the design. Now, when the 6.7s came out, uh, I guess we were under the illusion that the issue went away, but it actually has happened to 6.7s also. So, you know, what it, the, the basic... Uh, operation is the grid heater is sitting over here and I'll show you where it goes into the in, in, intake manifold uh, but the, the basic operation is it takes voltage off of this battery right here runs it down through a solenoid uh, the solenoid gets a signal from the PCM based on the intake temperature of the air and uh, it cycles on and off so in the summer it probably doesn't cycle at all in the winter time, it may cycle longer and it may cycle, uh, you know, uh, more often. But uh, once you take off above 15 miles per hour, I think it's, it's out of the picture, regardless of temperature. But, um, you know, some, some people are concerned about it. Uh, it can be disconnected uh, if a person was really concerned about it. I'm not... Uh, I'm not going to disconnect mine, but uh, it, it's something that can be done. But the way it operates, and it's a very simple operation, uh, it's so simple even a caveman could understand it, <laughs> like the Geico commercial. I love those commercials. But it comes off right here. Uh, you know, these two batteries in parallel, so you, you're drawing off of both batteries. But the physical wire to the grid heater comes off here. It comes down below the air intake to a solenoid. The solenoid gets a signal from the power control module, PCM as they call it, and uh, it, there's contacts there. So the uh, solenoid, when, it, when the contacts close, it sends current over here, and then it makes a, the complete circuit to ground. It takes about 215 amps. I've measured it, I'm going to show you what I measured, and uh, 210 to 215 amps is a pretty good base if a person wanted to measure it. There's a simple check for it though, I'm not just going to talk about it here. Uh, I'm going to show you what I think is a, is a valid check, a simple check. When you raise your hood, you check your oil, whatever, once in a while, take a look at it. And uh, I think this is, this is plenty enough, plenty good to know that your uh, grid heater is in good shape. Now, I, don't, I guess I didn't really mention what the issue actually is on the grid heater, which is the bolt that holds the grid heater, uh, the, the current coming in, the, the, the power coming in, 12 volts. There's a bolt down, we can't see it, but it's below, there's some insulation material, and I'll show you that in a minute. In fact, that's what we're going to actually inspect, is that insulation material. And we're going to do something called the, the jiggle test. Now, get your minds out of the gutter, because it's not that kind of jiggle test. It's not nearly as much fun, either. <laughs> that wasn't appropriate. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, what happens is, on some vehicles, and, I, and when I say some, I mean very, very few that this has happened to, but it has happened in this pictures of it, and I'm going to show you the pictures too. Uh, but uh, the bolt either gets loose or it's installed loose. No one seems to really have a decent explanation that I can find as to why this thing starts arcing. Well, when, when that happens, it, it, you basically got a, you've turned your your uh, 
grid heater 12 volts coming into a welding machine because of our, our cut, cutting torch because you're melting the steel bolt that's holding it up. And at some point, you know, once that thing starts arcing to ground, uh, at some point it's going to fall off and there's going to be metal flopping around in the intake manifold and it's going to find its way to one of the cylinders. And uh, when that happens, of course, you can't compress steel, so it's going to, it's go, it's going to be ugly. It's going to ruin the engine. It's basically, it's, it's going to be a total, probably a total engine replacement. But anyway, uh, enough about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll describe the circuit best I can and show you with the light and everything that we got. And, uh, but I want, I'll show you the jiggle test, and I think that's adequate, personally. You can tear the engine all apart and look at it, but, uh, and you can do an amperage test if you want to go to the next step, which is what I did just to be able to show you what the amps look like. It's 210 to 215 amps, uh, depending on whether it's running or whether it's uh, not. So I think we got a good base there, 210, 215 amps. But it's not necessary that you go out and buy a DC amp meter and start measuring amps and stuff. It's easy enough if you want to, though. The wire's right here. You just clip it on. Get your wife or somebody uh, to start the engine, and you can just sit there and watch the amps. But, uh, and what that would tell you is that it's not arcing across, if that would happen. And... Uh, because it's not going through that resistance of that heater, and that's that's what the deal is. So, let's take a look at it. Okay, so as far as the actual wire, that's it right here. And if you follow that down, you'll come to the solenoid. And there's the solenoid right there. And. You can see the red wire coming in right here. And you can see the, I'm gonna move my hand so you can see it. You can see the other wire, uh, which is actually a black wire going out. And you can see the two little small wires which come from your PCM. Uh, some people that are really concerned about this issue, they'll disconnect it right here this one. They'll disconnect that right there. And this is ground, so, you know, you can just tie wrap that up. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not worried about it that much. And, uh, but, you know, if, if you had an issue or something, you could, you could disconnect that. And then what's going to happen is your, your PCM is going to tell, energize the solenoid. But of course, the grid heater is not going to work. And it will throw a code if you let it sit there and and cycle, but you know how you can just hit your button and it'll start even though it's, it's waiting for the grid heater to, uh, to heat up. Well, that's, if, if you do that, then it won't throw a code. Uh, it'll most likely just crank right up. These engines will crank down to below zero without any, uh, any grid heater, but I think it's probably more, of, like I said, of an emissions issue. Okay, now for the jiggle test. So as you can see, right here, that's the bolt that provides power. There's a wire right here coming from the solenoid over there. It just wraps around in front of the radiator. And the bottom of that bolt has a nut on it, and uh, on the bottom of the grid heater, that is. And uh, that's the nut that's arcing and causing it to uh, fall off. So between the, the actual uh, grid heater and the top of this bolt, there's a, an insulator material here. It's, it's kind of a, I don't know if you call it rubber, but it's, a, it, it's, not, it's not metal, it's an insulator, and it's to insula insulate that 215 amps. So, this is what they call a jiggle test, and this is actually an official term <laughs> that uh, 
Cummins call, calls a jiggle test or ram, but you just take your take that wire right there and wiggle that connection and make sure that it's not loose. If this thing was flopping around or if this thing looked like it was melted or anything like that, then you'd, you'd be very suspicious. But of course, this one's not. You can tell that it's, it's in, you know, pretty much perfect shape, really. And uh, so there's nothing really to be concerned about there. And that's as far as I would go with it. Now let's take a look at the actual preheat and startup on the uh, 6.7 Cummins. I've got the video flipped upside down so we can see the amp meter better. I had to put it in upside down, so uh, that's why everything looks kind of weird. That less than 8 volts up there, I don't know why it shows that uh, on the EVIC panel because we've got 12 and a half volts. Uh, it's 62 degrees out here today, so we're not going to get much of a preheat uh, as far as the number of cycles. The preheater, there it goes there. You can see it jumped up to about 225 volts down around 11.45 and you can see the preheat cycle the engine's going to start up here in a second there it goes and uh, you can see our drawdown on the volts a little bit 11 and a half it's coming back up now with alternators charging we've got uh, about what 216 215 Levels off around 215 while it's idling. And this is not really something that needs to be precise because, uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of leeway there in the, in the, probably the accuracy of the meter itself. And, you know, the low 200s is anywhere in that area is probably good. Uh, and, you know, that's going to depend on your battery voltage, also the condition of your batteries, uh, that type of thing. But I just wanted to put this out uh, because there's been a couple of requests from people to, to do something on this. People concerned and asking the question, really, should I be concerned? And as far as I'm concerned, and I'm no expert, as I'm sure you know, but I think there's a whole lot of other things that could happen that would be uh, something to worry about other than this. Uh, I mean, this Cummins is a good rock-solid engine, and this grid heater works fine. There have been a few cases that this, this has happened. No one really knows why. It hasn't, come, it hasn't come out from Ram or Cummins why. Apparently, it's not enough for them to change the, the design. Uh, it's very rare, in other words. So, I would just uh, not be concerned about this at all. I was kind of reluctant to even make the video because I didn't want to scare anybody. But there are some people on some of these forums that are just, you know, going to extremes, t taking their grid heater out of engines that are in warranty and, you know, all kind of things like that because they're afraid of this infamous uh, killer grid heater bolt. So that's the size of it. That's what I got. I wanted to show you this. Uh, I don't think you need, like I said, I don't think you need to do the amperage test. I think just a visual test of your, uh, bolt there next to the, next to the head there on the grid heater is, is in my mind good enough. I touched it with my finger just to see if it was hot or not. It's not even hot. It's a good solid connection all the way through. I'm convinced of that on my truck anyway. And, uh. I think, uh, you know, on the ones that I've seen, the pictures that I've seen, uh, that insulator is pretty deteriorated and, you know, you can tell something's going on if you grab a hold of that wire and it flops around on you, then there's something serious fixing to happen inside. But as I said, it's, it's nothing really serious to worry about. So thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, adios.